Hey guys, this is Srini and this is a continuation of my previous uh, tutorial where we loaded a actively maintained data set for COVID-19 and uh, did a few plots. Now, in this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to do prediction of uh, COVID-19 cases in the next couple of days, uh, uh, all using, of course, Python. Now, uh, this uh, COVID-19 is as unpredictable as it can be, right? Things are changing on a daily basis and the predictability completely depends upon uh, how efficient the local healthcare system is and how good uh, the local governments are in leveraging the local healthcare system or in planning. So I'm not saying that uh, COVID-19 can be fully predictable for the next, you know, one month or so, but uh, I think we can safely predict at least one day or two days, you know, in most cases. Cases. So let's go ahead and look at this uh, using Python. So for that, let me jump on to the spider interface uh, for our Python programming. And here you can see the results uh, left over from my previous tutorial. Yeah, we were actually plotting, uh, since it's already up, I think it, it's it's worth uh, going through this. So we were actually looking at total world, yeah, in the entire world, except for China, what is the total cases versus death? Okay, total deaths. And then we looked at, okay, for a select few countries, how does this uh, total cases look like? And uh, how is our total death look like? And obviously it doesn't look very good for Italy, Spain, France, and even United States is getting pretty bad. Then we realized there is a big change in scale between these. So let's go ahead and plot them in logarithmic scale so we can bring everything into a similar scale so we can kind of uh, uh, have better look at these at, at the same time. Okay, and finally, uh, we took our total deaths and divided that with our total cases and then multiplied by 100 uh, to get uh, an estimate of mortality rate. And uh, again, this is not an encouraging number because the mortality rate, you know, is going up and it's about 4%. OK, and again, this value is after removing China, right? So with China, this value is much higher because initially China did not handle these uh, cases very well, especially in Wuhan. OK, so now uh, again, uh, I'm not going to explain this part of the code because I have already done that in the previous uh, tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste. And by the way, this part of the code, oh, sorry. This part of the code is uh, just importing the libraries, downloading our, uh, our data set and uh, formatting it for the date, you know, in the right format, checking for any empty empty cells and then uh, and then uh, uh, relabeling the, the columns into something appropriate and finally sorting the values based on country and date. OK, so it makes it uh, easier for us to plot them. So uh, now prediction is, again, uh, it should be uh, very straightforward uh, because we are going to use an exponential uh, prediction right now because most of the time if you look at these values, I mean, this is logarithmic, but if you look at this, these all look very exponential. In fact, that's a pretty bad scenario, right? I mean, if anything is growing ex at an exponential rate. So uh, what we shall do right now is actually create a function and again, in the interest of your time, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, write uh, this code right now. I have already written that and let me go ahead and uh, copy and paste that from my previous screen. And uh, again, I'm inspired to write this, most of this based on my uh, the blogs I read online, which means I copied part of it. So go ahead and read as many blogs as you can if uh, to, gain, to gain knowledge if this is a topic of interest to you, okay? Uh, don't be intimidated by all of this code. In fact, uh, the squiggly down there is telling me that I'm not importing NumPy, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, NumPy is... Uh, uh, a, another library to handle uh, to handle numbers, okay? And also SciPy, okay? So let's go ahead and import SciPy. Okay, so now what's going on here? Let me explain. So this function is going to take a uh, three inputs. The first one is a data frame where we have the data ready to be plotted. The next one, I'm just going to supply a title. And then the third argument is Delta. Delta in this case is how many days you know, towards the end of it, do you want to chop off so we can actually not include that as part of our modeling, but we're gonna hold that data for validation. So instead of uh, uh, forecasting, instead of predicting what's going to happen tomorrow, day after, 
to validate the model, what I'm going to do is, for example, my delta for, uh, is five days. I'm going to only use data until five days ago for my modeling, and then look at how these past five days actual data compare with the model that we predicted. I hope that makes sense. If not, once we plot, it should make a bit more sense. Okay, And then we are sorting the uh, values based on the date, and I'm defining my x and y here. X is nothing but a range of my uh, dates starting from the first day. So instead of actually plotting it per date, I'm going to plot it as day one, day two, day three, day four, and I think we have 84 or 85 data points. Uh, and y is, uh, let's go ahead and predict total cases, okay? Uh, I really do not want to predict total deaths. It's, it's, it's pretty disheartening. So let's only focus on total cases. Not that this is encouraging, but at least it's better than deaths. Uh, and I'm going to define my x and y values as whatever x values minus five data points, okay? So that's what this is, minus five data points. Remove the delta number of points. If our delta is five, it's gonna remove the last five data points and we are going to model it based on whatever is remaining. Now, for curve fitting, there are many ways you can fit this data. Uh, uh, for forecasting. So what we are going to do is uh, an exponential function. In case uh, you don't know what exponential is, it's nothing but y equals to a e to the power of b t. Okay, so a is one constant, b is another constant, the exponential is e to the power of, and t is our date, yeah, uh, in this case, or days. So this is what we are trying to fit, and how do we do that? The best way is in SciPy, Okay, there is uh, optimize.curvefit. Okay, in SciPy library, just import optimize and curve fit, and then uh, you have to provide a function. Okay, so our function in this case is our lambda function, which actually defines, uh, 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 you know, pretty much this thing, right? A, e to the power of, exponential is part of numpy. You can just do np.e exponential to the power of bt. So it's going to give us uh, the values of A and B, and T is something we are supplying, right? I mean, T is our time, okay? And then what data, X and Y, okay? And these are initialized values. So my initial values for A, I have no clue what it is. So I just gave it 20, and the, uh, B is an exponential, so it's usually less than one. So let's actually give a value of 0.2. Okay, and these are my initial values. It's going to report the final values anyway, and we can compare those with our initial values if you're curious. And that's pretty much it. And uh, now, uh, what C2 uh, is, it's basically, uh, you know, now we are unwrapping the C2 to get our A and B values, and we can go ahead and print our function, yeah, A E to the BX, if you're uh, curious about what those values are. And uh, what else? Uh, and then this part is just plotting. Okay, now that we have that, let me go ahead and plot uh, the real values. Let me actually show the right-hand side. Let's actually uh, plot the ones that we are using as part of our modeling, you know, this uh, as part of our uh, curve fitting in red. And uh, the last five data points, what this is, is the last five data points, okay? You see how this follows the colon and this precedes the colon, okay? Again, print each line to see exactly what effect it has. If you're new to Python, uh, it's, uh, it, it really helps you understand what's going on, okay? Uh, so these data points are not used for the model. Uh, they're used for, sorry, for spelling mistake, for validation, okay? And uh, we are going to plot that in blue, okay, these data points. And finally, we can actually, let's go ahead and uh, plot this actual fit. You know, the, uh, the, the fit values, you see, y fit. This is a e to the bx, right? Let's actually plot that line as green. This is the actual prediction we are trying to do, okay? Um, and then I included these two to actually say, okay, so now that we look at that, let's actually print out the values for the next five days. So this is where I'm trying to predict next five days. Uh, the last I checked uh, about uh, an hour ago, we had about 85 days worth of information, right? So that should stay there. So I'm gonna print a 85th day today and then the next five days, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna print the Y values. That's it. So let's uh, uh, go ahead and uh, uh, call this function. Okay, now that the function is defined, we need to obviously call it. And what did we call it? Plot exponential fit data, right? So the way we do that, first of all, let's actually get, pick three countries. Uh, actually, let's pick, 
these three that I've already written there. So I'm going to pick uh, USA, Italy, and South Korea because the situation. I'm well, I'm I'm in US and things are getting bad. So I'm curious. Italy, uh, you know, uh, you know, things are already bad, and South Korea they actually gotten much better. They had pretty bad time end of February, beginning of March, but now they seem to have much better control. So it, uh, let's see how we can predict on all these three and one at a time. I could have put this in a loop, but uh, I didn't have time. You can go ahead and do that. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is uh, look at one country at a time. So let's actually do uh, CVD underscore USA first, okay? And then plot this exponential fit. Again, what is the first argument or data frame? The second one is what is the title? And the third one, I believe, is how many days, right? Delta. Let's actually look at five days. So this is it. This is the code. Now let's actually look at, let me expand this side. Let's actually look at the result by running this entire code. We have a whole bunch of print statements. You can you can mute them if you want, but here you can see our values for A and B. A is 7.18, and the initial value that we gave was 20, I think, uh, for our A, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. It, it will find uh, the appropriate ones if you're relatively close, and B came out to be 0 0.29, okay? These two define the curve. That's it over here. So these are the expected cases the next five days, okay? Uh, so again, let's actually get to this, I mean, look at this in a minute, but let's actually look at this graph here. So as of uh, 80th day, we had 10,000 cases in the United States, and then they went to somewhere around 15,000, 81st day, and then to 20,000. By the way, this, these red dots are all used in creating this green curve, okay, in extracting these values which is nothing but defining the green curve. So the green curve is our model. And the dots are all real data points, including the blue ones, except we haven't used the blue ones as part of our modeling, okay, of this model. But you can see how nicely the blue ones fit the predicted model, which means uh, that the, the total number of cases in the US are actually growing exponentially. You see how this is fitting this line very well. Okay, so as of today, I think the value is 40 some thousand, right? I mean, we looked at this earlier. As of today, it's 40 some thousand. Uh, we can expect this to be 51 or 52,000, about 52,000 by uh, tomorrow. In fact, as of yesterday, it was 40 some thousand. As of today, it would be 52,000. Tomorrow, 69,000 and about 93,000 in a couple of days. Uh, so what this tells us is every other day or once every one, two, three days or two and a half days, uh, you can expect the total number of cases to double. That is pretty scary if you think about it. Uh, and then the day after that, 124,000. So hopefully something happens in the meantime. So this actually the curve flattens out and it doesn't grow exponentially anymore. Okay. So let's actually see how it looks for Italy. So let's go ahead and plot Italy. I'm not, I mean, we can change the title here if you want. Again, this is a bad way of doing it. In fact, the ideal way is to actually uh, put these in loop and plot everything at once. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot Italy. And here is our Italy. And it was actually growing at an exponential rate. And uh, this is very encouraging to see. You see how these last few days, it's actually almost deviating from this exponential, meaning the things are getting slightly better. And this is completely, you know, the uh, lockdown that they're doing in Italy. So this is slowly, hopefully this will flatten out and then come down, come back down at some point, okay? In which case then we can actually, instead of exponential, we can use some other model to model that data. Uh, and now because we have South Korea, South Korea actually got pretty bad ones. And now I think they crossed to the other side of this curve, but let's go ahead and check it. Okay. So again, let's run these lines one more time. Yeah. So you can see this is how South Korea was. It was actually getting pretty bad. They really took uh, very fast measures and then now things are actually flattening out and hopefully this will this will come back down pretty soon okay so uh, again this is how you can uh, 
do predictions for something as unpredictable as Corona-19. But again, please uh, do only three, four, five days because, of course, mathematically, theoretically, we can do one month, but that's not how the real world actually works. Okay, so I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And uh, again, please subscribe to my channel, Python for Microscopists, if you like to learn more about image processing and how to use Python for image processing. So thank you very much.